RFC Series 131 departing. 132 is in service by the way. I haven't really talked about that in any video but it has come just recently. And here we have V Series to Yanchip. Now we have an A series behind this one, all the way up to Yanship. Yes, I have recorded this before on the Tuesday after the opening when they first ran the A series all the way up. We thought it's not going to be very common, but a lot of C series seem to keep going out of service, which it's 132 today actually. Um, and A series is running six car formation all the way to Yanship yet again. I'm going to refilm a little bit because it's going to be daylight this time, or at least not pitch black when we get up to Yanchip, so might as well film it. Look at that, in less than like four minutes we're gonna see all three train types at Perth from from the newest to the oldest. <laughs> uh, now I'm not gonna record on the normal old sections because we've already seen that several times before but just up later when we're on the newer bits I'm gonna do a bit of recording there in the daylight. Here it comes. That was like three minutes. In three minutes we saw a C, we saw a B, and here's an A. Really, never would have thought this would have become common sights again. This is the first uh, Yanchip service which comes off a of Colburn service for the day because they do all full line services after about 5 p.m. now. It's 4.55, 4.57 when it leaves I think. Fortunately female announcer this time. We are just departing current by now. Uh, we'll get the Clarkson announcement without saying terminating. Next station, Clarkson. It's just the normal female though. You'd hear the same thing on the B series anyway. actually really cloudy here, there's a rainbow over there, um, looks like it might significantly rain, I thought there was going to be no rain today, but it's okay. This is actually the first 130 section on the entire Yantrip line from Perth, so first time it gets up to the speed on the north, although down south it does as well between Coburn and Perth, which is why they were able to run it on the W shuttles pretty easily. Here it might actually lose a few minutes, get it a few minutes late to the engine because of all this 130 section where it runs slower.
obviously doesn't go 130. Can only get up to 110. So yeah, actually, um, there are 110 sections on the rest of the line, so really it does get to the max speed for the A-Series beforehand. I'm just saying this is where, if it could go 130, it would go, but unfortunately not. And here we go, this is the section that we were not running in service until now. Until after the line opening. Properly can run it in daylight this time. The whole train is empty already, or I mean, at least this set. Which, typical, really, with five minute frequency all the way up there. I'm gonna pass by the depot right now, we're not gonna see anything special. But actually, no, we'll see 133 maybe, and also they've actually been testing 127 again recently today in the middle of the day, so potentially might come into service soon. Still haven't repainted it though. I really hope they do just keep the original Metronet livery, but don't think so. Definitely no driver swaps right now because this train's going straight back to the depot afterwards. Actually, no, 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 we did driver swap on the first trip, so actually they can. Wait, that's so strange. Yeah, we're slowing down. Wait, never mind. What? Why did they? Why did they driver swap when they're about to go back to the depot after anyway? Does the, that driver then have to get another different train out and keep keep running at night? Actually, yeah, that's probably what happens because later at night you see like a ton of three cars out. So maybe this is how the shifts work. The W pattern driver is now finished at the depot and then someone takes it up to Yanchev, runs not in service back to the depot, then takes the three car out. Yep, here they are, the two trains I was just talking about, 127 and 133. Actually, 127's Desto is really different as well. It's actually a lot bigger, the text on that, so definitely a bit of a pre-production model. We are actually swapping. <laughs> I literally said the complete opposite of what was correct before, and I said no driver swaps. Yeah. Actually, uh, that's how the shifts must work. I didn't even think about that until today. That's where all the three cars come from, because they wouldn't just go to the depot to split them in half. Hmm, 127 looks so weird. Honestly, I prefer the normal livery, but there's a lot of people who say, who say they like this one more, and that the old one, the newer one, looks like too retro. 
I mean the front of it looks really cool though with the different colored green stripes I don't know if you can see that there uh, but still it would be cool to have a different colored one it's a shame that they're all always the same you know good to have some different liveries don't know where 128 is I think he went back to Bellevue for some further modifications, I haven't seen it for a while. And also 127 doesn't even have the set number on the northern side of the train when it's on the highway lines, which is a bit weird. Otherwise, depot is almost completely empty right now, this is the first train to return to it from the W patterns. Just a few three cars that I saw, which I guess they can take out into service, or they can just split the W trains and then take them out again or something. Here's the other six car A, set 47, 17 and 22. Not needing to be used today, although they have used two at once. And they were both at Colburn at the same time actually. Someone got a really good shot of two six car A's at the Colburn sidings. Who would have thought we'd you'd ever see that? Anyway. Coming up to the end of the highway median running here, very shortly, or freeway, well, I should say. Yep, into the ditch. Right here is the potential location of a future station, Ridgewood Station, to bridge this massive gap from Clarkson. But... Not anytime soon. That was part of the original plan. Go watch my Butler Station video if you wanna learn more about that. My new one, definitely not the old one. That video was so minimalistic. good to get a bit of train content again at the moment because there's not really much to be filming right now no special events happening now a few months after the Antrip opening but of course Ellen Brookline's coming and we're gonna have so much content from that soon they've started testing already B series set 91 has been on the line for over two weeks now or just about to be two weeks Still a very slow approach into Butler here, around these bends. Another B-series on the other side. 72. Couldn't see the back at that speed. Definitely going to be late. I'm going at this speed. Okay, good. This passenger is getting off, so we have the entire carriage to ourselves. I'm gonna be able to talk a lot louder if no one gets on. This is Butler. There goes that announcement, and the displays are scrolling here. I don't need to show them though, I did that in the original A series video. Today is more about seeing the A series train while also looking out the window and providing a bit more commentary. You and I haven't gone up here in the daylight with the A. I did go one more time after I filmed the original video on a four car when there was a stadium event day, but that was still pitch black as well. Okay, here we go. The whole train, the whole set's empty now almost. There's one person in the entire set at the very front. No one in this carriage though, so I can talk as loud as I want now. Doors closing. Very nice how empty they get once reaching up here. So weird, if someone showed me a photo of this, a series at Butler, even like two months ago, three months ago, I would have said, no way. And it's true. I, I'm so glad that there's so much variety on the train network again. Next station, alcohol. Wow, 
the volume increase there, I think. All right, might stand up for a bit. No, still, no, still gonna look out the window, but. Nah, I don't know. I guess this is the best angle because you get to see the doors as well since all the platforms are on the left side. Definitely one of the most unique sections of the network here. The Antrip line is nothing in common with any other section of the network. The end of the Manger line, the trees are always right next to you on the track. So you don't get to actually see much, you just see bush, but here you actually can see so far away it's uh, placed in here with a lot of empty land around. And then with this I will have filmed, actually no, I didn't film the full journey on the C-Series on the first day, but at least film all three types of trains running in the new section in daylight. If you want to see the B-Series normal journey, just go to the opening video. I don't think I actually properly filmed the C yet, but... I, the first VIP service was a C, but it was too packed for normal, normal filming. There's the sun, definitely destroying the video quality if I point it that way. But I'm glad it's still up. This is Alchemos. This is Alchemos. Beautiful station. Haven't been up here for. Mm, three weeks now, only doesn't sound, actually no, two. Yeah, okay, you know, that's not even that long. <laughs> it just always feels good. Coming up. I should open the door for the video. I did get an exterior shot of the A-Series at Alchemos in the first week, so that's in the Alchemos station video. Oh, and the last passenger got off. Well, we have the entire set to ourselves now. That is, that is so funny. Departing. Honestly, it's pretty useless that they made this full five minute frequency. Most of the trains up here run empty. And most run empty on a weekend as well. Oh, you know what would be cool? Being in the middle right now. Probably not a great idea though. At this speed. There's all the new developments. These people are the most unlucky here. The houses here, uh, they have the train line literally right next to them but there's no station and there's not even a bus route in there as well they have to walk all the way out to Marmion Avenue where they can get on the 492 which is so sad they can see the trains but they can't use them easily so much noisier here being in the middle next to the next to the doorway oh gosh it's so noisy, okay. I'm gonna head back to our spot at the back here. Just, yeah, there's the shot of the full A-series. Also, Perth Royal Show, they're putting C-series on the ads with the showgrounds Desto, so I think we might be actually getting a C-series running on the Royal Show Express, which is going to be great, which makes sense because they're the highest capacity and they're a full six car, and they can run Express from Perth to showgrounds, so that'll be really good to have a C-series in service on the Fremantle line for once. Right, approaching Eglinton, I haven't actually got a shot of an A-Series here on the, from the outside before, but that's okay. I don't think this will be going away anytime soon yet, especially with Ellenbrook Line opening. They're going to be so short on rail cars. Even Armadale Line reopening. If they do not get all the C's out soon, they are not even going to have enough trains to open the project. So, they're pretty much already using almost every B-Series every day. There's just like a few being cleaned in the depot and then a few spare at Placebrook in case airport line trains have trouble because you can't replace them with an A or a C. It has to be a B. C is too long and A doesn't go in the tunnels. So, 
I mean, it can, but it's too noisy and just never has happened before in service because they just deemed it's not appropriate. This is Eglinton. This is Eglinton. But of course, you do get A's running up here. Unfortunately, not down to Madra either, though. B's go everywhere, really, except Big Park Shuttle, actually. They don't think they ever have. They're, they're maybe once, but they really don't go there now with the Armadillo enclosure. It would be cool to see a B series there. And then C, of course, is only on Yanchip and Madra lines in service. But as I said, Shogun's Express will bring you to the Fremantle line, so there's always some cool things to look out for. These signs here, they still put J on them just because that's the convention with all the other signs. That means Junalup line and then how many kilometers and meters you are from the marker 00, zero in the middle of Perth. Oops, I should have opened the door here as well. Never mind. Next up's already Anship. It's the end of my trip. 50 minutes goes so fast going north. Going south, it feels so much longer. Just because it's the new this section. section where this service terminates. And also because my local line and then like going up to Junlab just feels so ordinary and then after that it's already soon the new section so. Unfortunately didn't get the mail announcer today but that's okay. That's what the other video was for. I didn't even record the full journey in the other video because what's the point when when it was like pitch black? That's what this is for. It's about to be dark anyway in a second, but I mean in like 20 minutes. Such a cool part of the network. Nobody on the train. I wonder how many people are in the other sets. We'll see when we get off a Yanchip right now. See what I mean with this section? It's so good. You just look out, bushland, all around. You can see it there. Imagine if there's no one in the other sets and it's just a full six car A series running up MT. That's so bad. <laughs> As I said, pretty useless. The Mandra one is warranted, honestly. I haven't, I mean, I haven't gone and looked at it after Yanchip opening how full they are, but they were always packed, so five minute frequency to Mandra is good. Mandra's big place, but here, definitely not needed at the moment yet. There goes B series zooming past. And now over here actually is the spot which I recorded in the Two Rocks Bus Deviation video which you probably didn't see because not many people watch those but up there on that hill you can get up there on foot it's such a good spot to view the trains down below and we're already in the Anchip town I mean suburb like the actual residential area Again, I'm lucky with these people, just like the guys in Eglinton. <laughs> the, the train line's really not serving anyone properly at the moment. All the stations are in the middle of nowhere, and where the actual houses are along the line, there's no station, but it's all just future-proofing. Although I've heard there's future-proof for a station here, right here, Yanchip Beach Road, which is rather close to Yanchip, still not that close. There, there's a lot of close stations as well, like Whitford's Greenwood and and stuff but that's so dumb if they build it there in the future that's why it should be right now they should have just built it there it doesn't matter if it's not a proper terminus just build it there and say you're gonna build a proper terminus later um, or if you're gonna extend it to two rocks build a proper terminus there but I guess that's extremely long-term plans when this is like a proper built-up city area so wouldn't really be warranted to make it there plus there's no space for like car parkings or the bus interchange which they built up here 
Just such a weird system of infrastructure construction, though. In other cities, they definitely don't build out into empty developing areas and put an entire train line with 5 minute frequency in peak up there. Mm, I mean, one example is like East Pakenham on the Melbourne Pakenham line, which they extended the line and it's just like in a farmland. And I guess there's going to be development there, but that was more for complicated operational reasons to do with the regional trains being blocked at the old terminus. So it's not really actually that they wanted to extend it, they just took the opportunity to. But this was a full on, like, definite choice to bring it up here. Uh, platform 3 today, actually. I mean, makes sense, it's going out. <laughs> Jesus, slow down so much. It's going out of service, so... Last time I went into 3 as well with the 4 car, but... With the original 6 car, we didn't. Still have bad opinions on Yanchip, though. In, in terms of train spotting and taking photos, it's not that great at all. It looks good as a terminus, but not for putting it on video and getting good shots. Really slow entry onto this platform because there is a buffer at the end, so it's making sure you don't hit it. The other ones they can enter a bit faster. Now there should be two more C-series coming up right now. Uh, on W patterns which then do a full service might go try and ride one just for a bit I think they're a bit far behind though still like half an hour or something alright time to see if there's anyone else or if we were completely alone on this 6 car A today Ah, no, there's a decent amount of people at the front. Cool. Oh, wow. The, the next train is already there because it lost so much time going slower. Why are you repeating the announcement ten times? Yeah, so it, it basically lost a full five minutes. Almost. Four minutes, maybe. Wow, the driver's like repeated the announcement like 10 times already. <laughs> yep, and there's the next service. Right behind, so it probably had to slow down actually a little bit. Doors closing for this one. All three platforms gonna be filled right now. What? Why well, just have to release all that air? I thought it was just gonna keep going, crash into the buffer. Right behind. This one's probably even emptier now. Uh, nah, because most people would have come from the city anyway. 77. Never mind, that was right. There's absolutely no one on it. Might actually be zero passengers. That's crazy. A peak hour of service with no passengers. And 122 in the back. Oh, one. Okay, here there's a few. Two, three, four, five. For some reason, there's more at the back here. And on this train, there was more at the front. Five passengers on that entire train right there. Okay, we'll just wait for this one to leave. Here we go, unfortunately a much worse shot this time. Last time it was a four car, four car it stopped not right at the end, so I got a good shot. I'll actually insert that photo probably. Uh, I'm using like 0 
camera right now just to actually fit the front of the train in so it probably looks a little stupid but there it is an A series at the end ship in daylight so I know this video is like double the length of the other A series one but I just wanted to get a proper recording of this because one day inevitably this will never be seen again but not anytime very soon though so it's fine for the moment <laughs> Attention Transperth customers, please be advised that smoking is prohibited on all Transperth property. Thank you. Okay, here we are in 129 now. Completely empty again. No one you got on at Eglinton. But look at this. Or off, I mean. Look. What? Finally. They have listened to feedback. C-Series now have these grab handles on them. I don't know when this came into existence, but I just got on. And I was like, wow, something looks different. And I couldn't figure it out for like 30 seconds. I was like, what's different? And I was like, hang on, these aren't meant to be here. So yes, they've actually listened to the passenger feedback because the poles are extremely high. Only like even someone who me, who's really tall, can only just like grab it properly. So, uh, it's really good that they've put them on here now. There's only about four per pole though, way less than on the B. And I think they just took them directly off a of B series because they do not look in great condition. They're all scratched up and stuff. So actually, I think this is just taken off a of B. Now there's less of them on a B because they have like 20 per pole and they just put four in here. But still, good, this is 129. I don't know if the others have it and no one even mentioned it until now. I'm surprised no one's seen it yet. Because this was definitely one of the downsides of the C-Series, and now they fixed it. There's other down downsides, like stupid blue screens, but hopefully eventually they fix that. Also, did you know that the blue screen is actually also on this side, even when you're right next to the cab, which is so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, there's barely anyone on, on this train right now. Again, going up to Yanship, there's like three people. Just wanted to quickly go on it, but I'm very happy for this. Making sure to make the C-Series as good as it can be to serve passengers for once especially once these lines become fully C-Series exclusive. Yep. Pretty cool, okay. Anyway. Thanks for watching, there's like not really much you can see again because it's pitch black. I just went on an A-Series and then on a B-Series back to Alchemos and now on a C-Series. A, B, C. All in a row. Plus we started this video with seeing the C-Series, so very good. But that was a different one. It looks so much better with the grab handles actually, especially because it adds some like light grey. Because right now everything is just yellow and green and dark grey, so, or white. And the light grey really gives it a nice touch. Although they still haven't fixed the maps in these, they still haven't put the stadium sticker on top. 131 has the full sticker without, I mean, like, without any stickers, with everything already on one. But these still have stickers. The Armadale line is not a sticker, though. Anyway, that's it. C-Series terminated at Yanship. Nothing special about that. Oh, from the top. I haven't really seen them from the top. Just really glad they have the grab handles. Now, anyway, thanks for watching. This video is now insanely long. What? 58 minutes? 
I oh, know that's probably a later train. This one's just going back to the depot. Uh, yeah, cool. Back at Yanship again. Time to actually go back properly now. 